All right, so thank you. Thank you for coming. So I was telling you about the market. Knowing about the market is uh, half the battle. And knowing about yourself is, is like conquering the any profession, knowing about yourself. So it helps also that you know yourself uh, when you're trading. If you don't know yourself, is hard. So knowing yourself is a big, 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 big topic very big it contributes at least at least minimum 60 percent of your success so if you evaluate uh, the ingredients towards your success um, then what factors contribute towards my success because uh, if the same trade if you give the same trade to uh, 10 members only two will maybe make the money and other eight will make the boo boo out of it. Someone will get out at 10 cents gain. You know, like, like yesterday I was talking to one member and he said, Oh, I traded your Moss calls. I had four contracts and I got out three contracts at $10 each profit, meaning 10 cents at profit. So I said, well, Why did you got out at 10 cents profit? What's the reason? Uh, first, he said, I got out all four contracts. Then he realized that he did not. He still have one contract in his portfolio. Then I asked him, okay, what is the third? Why you sold uh, at $10 profit, 10 cents? He said, well, the market may tank during the weekend. Who knows what happened? So I got out. I sold. So I said, okay. So 10 traders give the trade a two will do the same maybe one or two exactly the way you tell them to do doesn't matter what targets you provide what stop loss doesn't matter what you say the other eight traders will do some mediocre and some will make a boo-boo of the trade because uh, they are they and i'm i it's me you're you so everybody is different so 60 percent of your success come from knowing yourself, who you are. Because if you are a 65-year-old person, it's different than a 25-year-old. So he is uh, 65. Uh, he's retired. So I'm giving you one uh, profile of a trader. So think about it. I'm giving you a profile of a trader, a person who has done the PhD. Uh, back home, he was uh, you know, not in a good condition. He came to America with all the dreams and he went through the education, did all the way, went to PhD. So doing the PhD is not easy. So he must be something. And then he worked hard, have a home, have other properties, retired. Now he wants to trade. And why he wants to trade? Well, I need some excitement. I was, yeah, when I was at work, I had some excitement. So when you go to work, you have excitement. You go, you you know, you meet your colleague, uh, ha ha hoo hoo. You do the work, uh, you get bonus, you get salary, enjoy the lunch, dinner, come home, be happy with your family. So all that excitement, ha ha hoo hoo, goes. Um, and at work, they are, you know, you get it from work. But then when you retire, then that uh, that ah he hoo hoo excitement level gone. So what to do now? I'm so bored. Uh, let's open a trading account. I got some money, $50,000 I can put in the account and start trading. Uh, so so not good. So this is just one profile. So pay, traders don't want to work on themselves. So uh, people live in the comfort zone. As uh, we all know, people live in the comfort zone. So this is the comfort zone. Um, all life work hard i we understand work hard went to the school university got the phd that's the work but that's not uh, the comfort zone the person broke the comfort zone when he traveled from his country and found someone to sponsor him came to america went washed the dishes etc so he broke all the comfort zone he lived in the edge and started flying he got rid of all the limitation he had and then got the phd got the work now he retired so when he retired he's come back to the comfort zone so he's not living at the edge he's he's back in the comfort zone he has a, a pension coming in he has a, a wife he has children grown up 
So he is back in the comfort zone. Now it's very hard to go back to the edge and try. So knowing yourself contributes towards success. Another factor towards the success is responsibility. People don't take responsibility. Uh, they just uh, want to get some uh, some tip, some scanner. Give me some. Uh, give give me the source of the scanner you run, so that I can make money, or give me some hot tip. You know, I open an account on a Robinhood with two thousand dollars. Give me some hot tip, so that I can make some money. That's that's they're shifting their responsibility by buying a newsletter for eighty-seven, ninety-seven dollars, some seven dollars, forty-seven dollars. So one person sent me email saying. Hey, uh, Noshi, uh, you know, so he's chatting with me on my Facebook and I don't chat and he just comes up and he says, hey, I sent you $87, but I'm not seeing any money coming in my account. So I said, what? So I talked to my team member. I said, can you check his account? He's saying he sent 87. He's not uh, making any money. So, well, you find out this. Yes, he has signed up. So I said, hey, Cody, uh, we are sending you trade alerts and are you not getting it? Do you want us to send you through SMS? And he said, no, 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 I am getting it. But I thought you will make the money for me. So my bad. I thought you will make the money for me. I paid you 87 and uh, you will transfer the money to my account. So I explained to him. So he said, my bad. And then I have not heard from him. So he's gone. So he wasted his $87. So responsibility versus success. So the more responsible you are, the more successful you are. So take responsibility for your success. Now there is another study done. The study says that if you take the traders, uh, the number of traders who are starting the career, only 11.5% uh, are successful, 18.5%. So it, uh, let's say three year data. So only 11.5% are successful, 18.5% are break even, and then 70% traders are losing money. Even if they follow the same trades given to them, only 11.5% will be making money, 18.5% break even. So 70% are losing money. So this 11.5%, they are doing something right. They're doing something right. And these 18 and half, they are also doing something right because they are not in the 70% category, but then from time to time they do something wrong and then they go into the break even uh, category. So they sometimes they are in the uh, winning category and then they do something wrong and they go back into the break even category. So they try not to go in the orange category. So they stay in the break. So it's not bad, they learn something in three years. So there's something they are doing right, these 11 and half percent. So we need to study them what they are doing right, how they are succeeding, and the others are failing. So others are failing miserably, not failing like miserably, not one time, but two times, three times, and they don't learn the lesson that why they are failing. And the lesson they learn, they say, oh, broker is bad, or my newsletter guy is bad, or my software, you know, this indicator is not working. It works sometime, it doesn't work sometime. What's wrong with this indicator? I paid $49 and it's just a waste of money. So all that is going on. If you give them uh, the list of the books to read, they don't want to read. Who read these books? Don't have time to read the books. Well, they are free. You can find these books free. Do you have time to read? Do you... Uh, it's on uh, YouTube or it's on Amazon. It's free. A lot of things are free. So go and read. No, 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 no. I don't have time to read. Just give me the hot tip. So, so hot tip uh, doesn't make you money. So now, uh, so the study is done. The most important factor in trading or in any profession is you. So it's you is the most important factor. And then there are two other factors, which. Uh, contributes towards your success. So I'll talk about those two some other time. So you is the most important factor. So if you recognize this, then you will work hard towards uh, this factor, you. So consult, um, this is a full lifetime journey to know who you are. Uh, even your spouse doesn't know who you are. 
So, or your spouse doesn't know you and you don't know your spouse. So learn who you are. And then once you know who you are, then you perform your self analysis unconsciously every day all the time you need to perform your own yourself what is going on with you so the top traders these guys uh, these guys 11 and half percent guys these guys are doing something uh, correctly everything so one of the things they're doing is they're performing their self-analysis uh, just one one factor in their trading they are performing the self-analysis so self-analysis is a big topic so you need to consult some experts there um, i do have a course on it i'm offering it for 297 eight day course i learn from the experts i spend hundred thousand dollars not much not 297 thousand not 297 not 2970 not ten thousand hundred thousand dollars i spent on improving myself so you will say oh, no she is a foolish guy a hundred thousand yes hundred thousand uh, dollars but it changed by trading change so that course that not that course it's not the thing i learned a little bit here there uh, i mean i learned a lot but then i extracted some and i said okay maybe i should convey some of the knowledge so that course is uh, for 297 uh, duplicating success so I teach for eight days. Maybe I'm adding, I, I was teaching for six days and then I said, okay, maybe I need to teach this for eight days. And then um, now it may go to nine days because I'm adding more uh, content into it. So if you're interested, send email to success at Trade Genie and they will enroll you for that eight day course. It's only 297. So you can be on top 11% if you do self analysis. One of the steps, when you wake up there are many many steps many 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 steps you need to do before when you wake up like right in, the moment you wake up in the bed uh and by the time you start trading so you must have some routine um and the routine should be such that if there is a camera installed in your house and somebody is watching from the other side that person can exactly predict what is your next step they can say, oh, I, I know, I know. Now he will do this step. Watch, watch, watch. He will do this. Then watch, he will go there and do that. That's the way your routine should be if you want to be successful every day, day in, in and out. So one of the step when you wake up is you need to rate yourself on a, some scale. Maybe you say uh, on a uh, one to eight rating, you know, just rate yourself one to on a one to eight scale and then you say okay how the hell i uh, you know i first of all you say thank you god i am alive so you realize i am alive and then you say okay why i am uh, feeling very grouchy why i'm so uh, bad um, right now so so you know, immediately give some rating to yourself so ideally you, when you wake up fresh you need to be on the other side of five at least five but if you're if you are a headache not, not complete sleep you only you know your body is aching you don't know where you woke up you know and you don't know your uh, what you you have to do today you don't know what happened last night so all that you need to rate one of these uh, in, in this category one two three four so if you're rating five, then it's like you are neutral. So five means that you will barely survive during the day. So you will barely survive. You're just looking forward to the day to be over. Maybe you have to go to work. But if you're blessed and you woke up in the quadrant of six and seven, so you need to ask yourself, what, what things I did last night or the day before that i am feeling six and seven and then there is an eight so eight is like super fresh and excited so you need to be aware of if you're rating yourself eight so if you rate six and seven you're pretty good but if you're rating eight rate is fine but then you need to put a like a sticky note warning i am rating myself eight i'm super excited i'm fresh the night before was great 
uh, had a great meal, met some friends, went to bed early, and I'm super excited and things are looking pretty good. And yesterday was pretty good too. So maybe yesterday, uh, today is a Tuesday and yesterday was Monday and you made a lot of money and you woke up fresh on Tuesday morning. So, so you need to rate. So every day in the morning, I rate myself, where am I on one to eight, even on weekend, Saturday and Sunday, because Saturday and Sunday, I have to do certain things. Maybe I need to take my children to the beach or some park. So if I'm rating myself one, two, three, four, one or two, I may not be taking them out. And then they will say, daddy, did you change, you change your plan? You change your plan so often, now you're not going. So I have to uh, be, you know, I, I, I'm getting I'm getting punished. Uh, Saturday morning I woke up. I'm getting the results of my things I did on Friday night that I'm getting punished on Saturday morning. So remember there was a Jerry Seinfeld show. There was a morning Jerry and there was a night Jerry. So not night Jerry. Um, um, the morning Jerry did not know what the night Jerry did, and the night Jerry. Uh, did not know what he's doing that when he gets uh, the morning Jerry, he will be someone else. So I may be punishing myself and my children for waking up in a category of one or two. I need to wake up, even if it's Saturday and Sunday, I need to wake up in six, seven or eight. So when you wake up, this is the first thing you do, you rate yourself. And so in the morning when we wake up, we rate ourselves and then the things improve, like things improve when we take shower. So whatever is your routine, my my level goes up a little bit when I come out of the shower. Uh, things start to improve for me when I uh, drink half a cup of coffee. I'm halfway done. I can see I improve. I got some caffeine. And then the things go more on a positive side, seven or eight, when I see my portfolio up or things are looking good in the market. So all that little, little things add up, even though I woke up, let's say, at uh, quadrant six. But then if I wake up at one to four level, then it uh, doesn't matter how many showers I take or how many coffee I take, is the needle is not moving. So I need to rate that and then gradually need to see if there is any difference in the rating. So. And, and another important thing is, uh, so take shower. I, I mean, I'm telling, I'm not telling you to do this thing, but I'm telling you what I do. Take shower, the first thing. I mean, do, you cannot stop me from taking shower. So that's the first thing. I'm, the moment I wake up, I rate myself, I thank God, and I am in the shower. Take shower, coffee pot is getting ready. I come out, I take, uh, I do meditation. So I'm not bragging to tell you that I'm doing meditation. So that's the start of the loop. So just like any any and any conversation you do, you know, people start the loop conversation and then they don't end the conversation. I hate that when people don't close the loop, they just, you know, they start a conversation and then they close. They don't close the loop. They don't close. So same way you start a day with some bless, uh, you know, thank God I'm awake do some meditation and then when you sleep you close that loop you go and meditate for five ten minutes and thank god and close the loop because now you're going to sleep and the sleep man sleeping man is as good as a dead man so you woke up fresh you meditate for five minutes every day you pray uh, that the things go well so you go inside yourself and then you start rating again now you have taken the shower time has gone by you rate yourself it doesn't take much time remember you're trying to make money from the market so you need to do certain things a little bit you know you just don't be um was it it i don't i am not getting the word like a freeloader so don't be a freeloader just give me some tip and make me money you you need to do a few things yourself so meditate for five minutes go inside yourself rate yourself on the scale of one to eight and then if you rate yourself one to three then it's a poor you say okay uh, i'm a poor person right now i'm feeling really bad watch out average four to five so when i rate myself four to five i mean one two four or five i immediately inform i have a team so i inform them that hey i rated myself uh like this uh, i hardly rate one to three uh because i try i try to not to do things before 
uh, that I have to rate one to three. So it's four to five, but I inform my team that I'm rating myself this. So they are aware of that Noshi uh, maybe, uh, you know, so they are aware of of my rating. So I rate, so if I rate poor one to three, I'm aware of that I'm really bad. And if I'm rating myself one to three, then it means uh, today is the day where I will make a lot of mistakes, including trading. Uh, I will get mad at somebody. I may raise my voice. I may make the wrong decision. I may sign the wrong document or contract. I may take the wrong um, uh, trade. Uh, I may exit early. I may exit late. Uh, I may think that this trade is looking good, but it's not because I am paralyzed, uh, you know, literally paralyzed. My decision capability has gone down. So I'm aware of very poor. So all I'm doing is when I'm rating one to three in case uh, I'm trying to survive the day. I'm looking for the nap. I'm trying to survive the day and I'm trying to do those activities which make me alive like just so find your activities like i'm anchoring myself maybe i'm reading book so i i like so I'm, i tell you when i am doing like this i i try to read books or listen to the books or i if i have to clean something i go clean uh i go and try to cook something so to divert myself so i do all those so whatever is your activity you do that or just take a nap again up 11 o'clock but don't trade, don't open any new position. You will make mistake. If you're average four to five, then you're just there and you are uh, just managing your open position. So you are monitoring your open position. They're not going uh, here and there and you are okay with that open position. If you have to close a position, you close, but you're aware of that. So you're not in a position to open a new position because you will make mistake. That's where uh, the you will drop from. If you keep doing it, then you will come. You you were in a green quadrant. You may end up in the blue quadrant. And from blue quadrant, if you keep doing doing doing, you will end up at the end. When you know, remember the Christmas is coming. So every year, first of January, I remind myself the Christmas is coming, and I need to show something. So I better stay in this quadrant and I don't do all these stupid things such as uh, rating myself one to three and um, uh, buying something or opening a new position. So I don't do those uh, things. I'm aware of that. I try not to talk to many people. I try not to um, do other things related to which can harm. I'm just like, I become like I'm I, um, uh, missing in action. So now she is missing in action. I'm uh, sitting in the room, just reading books and doing, not interacting because I, I will do something stupid. Average four to five, I'm barely surviving. So barely surviving, just managing my position. Six and seven is score. That makes me excited. That may, tells me, okay, I'm fit. I had a great diet. I had a great sleep. I woke up on time, which is five o'clock in the morning. I performed my meditation and i know what's what is happening in the market and i'm ready to trade so feeling of score of six to seven tells me that i'm ready to trade i can initiate my new position also besides taking profit in the existing uh, open position or if i have to take a loss so if the score comes six to seven i say yes so checklist yes i can trade today um or eight but eight comes with a warning and if four to five, I'm barely surviving, I just manage my open position. So there is a method of monitoring your position. So I do that. And then put one to three, I'm just not touching anything. I, I will make mistake. Instead of buying calls, I may end up buying puts. Instead of buying a five contract, I may end up buying 10 or 50. Uh, instead of, um, you know, uh, <laughs> buying uh, Apple, I may end up buying uh, Baba and then worry about it that why did I buy Apple or Baba? Instead of buying a, a 50 strike, I may end up buying a 55 strike. So I'm doing all that kind of mess up if I am in one to three. So I don't want to do that. So now when I rate my scale a score six to seven, this is my target, ideal. Seven days a week, this is my target. And I know exactly when I rate four to five. It's, it's, it's me. And what did I do? Ate something very yummy. Late at night, 10 o'clock, uh, watch something on uh, Netflix, 
you know something exciting uh, episode came and i cannot just go to sleep and then it's just going and going and going from one episode to another episode so this is what i did so i know all that so i will pay the price because i'm getting the pleasure and then i have to pay the price so feeling score needs to be six to seven now if your score is uh, if let's go over this if you rate yourself one to three then you are expected to perform mediocrely you're not supposed to even open a new trade because you cannot decide your brain doesn't work when you rate one to three which means you are uh, deprived of sleep you are stressed out and there's a lot going on if you rate it four to five then you should perform as expected and you are supposed to just manage your open position so open manage your open position when you rate four to five when you are rating one to three uh, you are not supposed to open any new position and even the managing of the open position becomes hard so remind yourself that if i try to take the profit uh, i may be overlooking something and i may be taking a ten dollar profit per contract uh, instead of uh, waiting a little bit more maybe there will be two hundred dollar per contract profit because when i lose i will lose two hundred dollars so why i'm taking ten dollar profit so maybe rating one to three ask all these questions when you rate six to seven then at the end of the day you say when you are doing the debriefing so you have to go through another step which is debriefing at the end of the day so you're closing the loop midway so then you ask yourself okay all the decisions i made in the trading i opened these position i closed these position i ignored these trades these were the reasons and uh, it as uh, you know i did good above above par i i did i did pretty good now if you rated eight which is like super super good uh then you should perform good too great but sometimes people perform poorly uh, even though they are rating eight so what happened is when you perform poorly and you rated eight then uh, it could be that it has nothing to do with your physical uh, sleep or physical you just became arrogant uh, then nothing can go wrong and it could be that the day before you had a great uh, winners a lot of winners you books a lot of profit and today you're feeling excited so now you became arrogant and instead of buying 200 shares you're buying 500 shares instead of uh, opening uh, two positions, you open uh, 10 positions or things like, instead of checking, uh, going through the checklist, you did not perform the checklist. So you ignored your own rules. Instead of uh, selecting um, the trade based on some, some, some criteria, you listen on TV and uh, took the trade or some uh, Facebook or some Momo stock, you know, some news on Twitter, something like that. So you you violated your own rules. So you perform poorly, and you will perform poorly on that trade. Maybe you bought it at the high. That's it. The volume climax. So why did you do that? Even though you were feeling good, because you became overconfident of your capability. So it's, so keep an eye on rating eight. Rating six to seven is good one. Rating eight is good as long as you don't go on the other side. So sleep is very important sleep deprives us it and and on top of that if you have a stress like uh people do you know they go through the life cycle and they get the stress sometimes there's uh, no stress so only you know at any given moment in life like time segment uh january 1st to january 9 no stress oh my goodness there's no stress i'm fine so be aware of your stress and issues so take a note and if you have a stress try to try to handle it quickly if it's a financial stress like um which you can take care of this somebody is nagging you you know thirty dollar forty dollar hundred dollar forty dollar this take care of that stress if it's something big then you are aware of it and take care of it because the stress will cause uh you to lose sleep and when you lose sleep then you will lose the performance so decision decision making ability goes down so decision making ability goes down just need to be aware of if you are aware of that i am un, not capable of making the right decision you will avoid trading that day because during the day there is a large amount of data being thrown at us 
in trading. And human cannot process more than seven, not even more than three. So, uh, you know, you cannot even memorize more than three things at a time. So this, try doing it. So we all know that. So one symbol, so many data, so many things to check. We cannot analyze all that when we are stressed out and when we are rating ourselves below six. So five, four, three, we cannot. So performance drop can occur by at least 10%. So knowing that I will make some wrong decision and my performance will go down by 10%, the, the profitable trade will turn into break even. So if you keep doing this, like waking up late and not taking care of your health, indulging in vices, going to party, drinking alcohol and uh, uh, going for a lap dance, you know, on a, uh, like one of my friends. <laughs> so I'm just saying he's not doing it, but he just uh, tell me. So, uh, so doing all that will add up towards your trading performance. So be aware of have a healthy diet, go to gym, exercise, sleep early. Uh, do your work uh, and then trading will improve. If you don't, then the trading will suffer. Also, the last thing is some traders are worry type of traders. They worry about everything. They worry, worry, worry everything. The world is negative. Something is wrong with me. Something is wrong with them. They are trying to get me. They, um, you know, left coast, east coast, west coast, uh, uh, Republican and, and uh, Democrats and uh, uh, news junkie and all that so i don't do that i don't watch tv i don't read news i don't uh, worry about uh, i worry a little bit uh, republican democrat but i'm not into politics and i don't read news i don't surf i don't talk to the negative people i'm not a i'm not so i tell you i'm not like that so uh people are supportive of me i look at the world positively you need to look at the world positively everybody is there to support you if if there is somebody you cannot find uh, who's supportive of you find someone there is somebody who's supportive of you so don't think about others negative and, and all that junk so if you are you are affecting yourself and you're trading indirectly if you have a stress you can find out all this on online the the sources of stress the family you know, uh, like in some culture, like my culture also, my mother-in-law, my brother-in-law, my cousins and uh, sisters and uh, nephew and nieces, they are all giving some kind of a stress. Somewhere they are in the WhatsApp group, somebody is talking about something. So, so they are I mean, unnecessary stress, so family stress. If it's genuine stress, yeah, we understand somebody is sick and you close, then you're getting the stress. So we get all this stress, but the gossiping and the indulging in unnecessary affairs, creating unnecessary stress. So avoid that. Work stress. If you are working, a boss stress and a colleague stress and a boss boss stress and whatnot. Health stress. If you don't take care of your health, you get this. I mean, you will pay the price. So health stress, diabetes and this and that. So, so it's, it, if, and, and old age, old age stress, financial stress. So, you know, so all this source of stress plus not getting enough sleep. So that is also affecting our trading. So think about it, how many non-technical thing, non-risk management thing are causing uh, the effect on our trading performance. These are not related to trading. This is nothing to do with technical analysis, nothing to do with your risk management. Maybe risk management comes here, financial stress that you invested in a uh, in a deed on a second position and you didn't listen to your friend and now that party is uh, uh, not uh, defaulting and you're pro you're, you are in a second position and you're losing money. So so uh, you're losing money in another another business another investment and is causing you stress in trading which has nothing to do with you in trading trading has nothing to do with that but because you made a wrong judgment in another side so it's causing trouble you spend a lot of money on your credit card and the credit card is maxed out maxed out now you have a stress you borrowed the money on the credit card because somebody said you can borrow money on a credit card at a 13 percent 14 percent and you will make out like a bandit so borrow as much so you borrowed, now you cannot pay from the trading, so it's causing you stress. And then there is another category of 32%, such as, you know, the rat 
uh, chewing your uh, wire and uh, there is a power outage. So that causes stress. So all that stress, so change your attitudes about stressful events, change your belief about a stressful event, cope under the stress, sleep good, have a diet, don't indulge in vices. And there is a book called I'm OK, You Are OK by Thomas Harris. Read this book. Uh, what I'm telling you is there. So I'm OK, you're not OK. There is a different view. I'm OK, you're not OK. And then there is another view. I'm not OK, you are OK. But the view should be I'm OK, you are OK. So book by Thomas Harris, read this book. And then there is another book called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. So read this book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. So the more things you do, in this area not only in reading the you know give me the hot tip uh, the more your trading will improve indirectly so this is not some voodoo or magic or things it it it, it works so this is just one two books for your reference so and and list down all your uh, have a plan if you are stressed out and why you cannot have a sleep uh, list out all the stresses in your life and take action execute Execute the plan. The more peaceful you are in your life, the more you will perform better in trading. The more peaceful you are in your life, more organized you are, the more you know uh, things are in order. The more things are moving in a systematic way, the more in success you will have in trading. So that that's it. Uh, so don't live in your comfort zone. Uh, go beyond and do the thing which you are supposed to do every day to succeed in the stock market because stock market is full of deception and you are paralyzed in identifying those deception when you are not feeling good all right so i end here and i'll talk to you later I have to go and do my work. I have to look at my trading work, 1240, 20 minutes left. Let's see what else I can do in the market and then take lunch and, and uh, take a nap and then get ready for tomorrow. That's my objective. I don't know about you, but I'm going to take a nap after lunch and get ready for tomorrow. So see you or call my friend, John. Bye.